Hello, this is Rupinder Sial and welcome to Spartan Tutorials. Now, as the COVID-19 crisis surges across India and worldwide, I think it is time for the different regulatory agencies as well as government bodies to really look at the evidence for effectiveness of various medicines that are being prescribed for treatment of COVID-19. One of the drugs that has been in the news recently because of massive black marketing in India and excessive prices being charged from patients is Remdesivir. But actually, when we look at the evidence for Remdesivir's effectiveness against COVID-19, it does not hold up. And that's what we are going to talk about today. So let's get started. Remdesivir is made by Gilead Biosciences. Already it was approved for emergency use authorization by FDA last year in 2020 and it has made close to a billion dollars in sales. Even in India, one vial of injection of Remdesivir costs something like 5000 rupees. So it is not a cheap drug. So it has to be really effective to justify its cost. This is the structure of Remdesivir. We won't go into the technical details about it. I will just go through a little bit of its history just to show you how it was uh, developed. So it was initially developed to treat hepatitis, but the clinical trial results showed almost no benefits. Then it was repurposed and used in clinical trials in Africa for treatment of Ebola virus. And it also gave, gave almost lackluster results over there. And when it was tried for uh, COVID-19, the results were mixed, but based on that fragmentary evidence, I think due to some string pulling or due to some uh, back the backdoor negotiations, the FDA approved Remdesivir, maybe because they had no other options at that time and they did not want the public to feel helpless. But WHO recently looked at all the evidence and it conducted a huge trial, which is called the Solidarity Trial. And it published guidelines on what treatments do work for COVID-19. They tested a bunch of them. So what did they test? They tested chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine. I think you must be familiar with them. They were in the news last year a lot. Antiviral drugs like lopinavir, remdesivir, and lopinavir along with interferon beta, which is a protein produced by cells in response to a viral infection. So this solidarity trial was conducted in many different countries with very good manufacturing practices, data analysis, and this led to the recommendation against Remdesivir. So we'll come to that. Why they, did they make this recommendation? Now, this is the final report for uh, the evidence for Remdesivir for the treatment of COVID-19 published in the New England Journal of Medicine, which is a very reputed journal, I would like to say, along with Lancet and other for example, Journal of American Med Medical Association, NEJM or New England Journal of Medicine is one of the most respected journals out there. So this is one of the pages from the results. So they said that, okay, we had 1000 patients. They had randomized treatment. So some people received remdesivir and some received placebo. So no treatment. And what they found was Remdesivir was superior to placebo in shortening the time to recovery who were hospitalized with COVID-19 and had evidence of lower respiratory tract infection. So people who already had lower respiratory tract infection, they probably benefited in the shorter recovery time, but it had no ben benefit regarding the mortality. I think that's what the crux of the matter is. Does it help with preventing the deaths of people. The reduction of recovery time when a drug costs so much, I don't think uh, is justified. And that's what WHO 
considered in recommending against remdesivir. So this is the statement by Dr. Peter Bach, director of the Center for Health Policy and Outcomes at Memorial Sloan Kettering Center. Uh, this is an entirely appropriate decision by the WHO. It costs thousands of dollars. The largest randomized trial examining its use in COVID suggests it may have no benefit of any kind. And the one positive study dates back to a time before we were using dexamethasone for severe disease. Dexamethasone here refers to systemic corticosteroids, which we'll come back in the later part of this video, because this is probably the only thing that actually works. And this is another statement from New York Times, corticosteroids and interleukin-6 inhibitors probably confer important benefits in patients with severe COVID-19. GNS kinase inhibitors also appear to have some benefits, but there is uncertainty about that. Now, what does not work? Azithromycin, hydroxychloroquine, lopinavir, ritonavir, these are antiviral compounds, interferon beta, and remdesivir, ivermectin, these drugs, they confer any patient important benefits. It's uncertain. So I don't know what was the haste in recommending remdesivir to the whole population of US and across the world. So we don't know, only history will show. So here we have another study from New England Journal of Medicine. This was published in February this year, repurposed antiviral drugs for COVID-19. This is the results of the solidarity trial. So 11,000 patients approximately. So they had these four regimens, remdesivir, hydroxychloroquine, lopinavir and interferon regimens had little or no effect on hospitalized patients with COVID-19 as indicated by what are they looking at? Overall mortality, initiation of ventilation and duration of hospital stay. This is a big statement. If remdesivir does not help with any of these, then what is it helping for? It's a very expensive drug and, and I see social media messages all the time, people begging for remdesivir. And that's why I wanted to make this video to just inform people about the strength of evidence or absence of evidence for this drug. This is the actual Kaplan-Meier survival curve, which basically shows how many people are still surviving on this on, on a treatment as compared to a control treatment. And you can see the control treatment, the placebo, as well as the remdesivir, the curves are almost identical. Same is the case of hydroxychloroquine. Actually, more people are dying from hydroxychloroquine as compared to those who are given nothing. Lopinavir, control is, uh, lopinavir has a little bit of uh, benefit but control is performing almost the same and again interferon a more people died when it was given as compared to control which is kind of an interesting result maybe it is not targeting the actual mechanism of uh, viral infection because otherwise interferons are pretty good at combating viral infections now this is the final guideline produced by WHO which they call the living guideline means it is constantly updated. Now it is as I believe it is in the fourth version. It is constantly being updated but this is what it says. The panel found a lack of evidence that remdesivir improved outcomes that matter to patients. Reduced mortality, need for ventilation, time to improvement and others. The the Outcomes that matter to patients are not supported by evidence for remdesivir, right? So this is a big, you know, canary in the coal mine. I don't know how this drug got approved. However, the low certainty evidence for these outcomes does not prove that it is ineffective. Rather, there is insufficient evidence to confirm that it does not improve patient important outcomes. So uh, we are not saying and the people who are looking at this data are not saying that it is not effective. They are just saying there is not enough evidence to support it. Okay, And that's what the regulatory agencies and the government bodies need to think about while pushing for more remdesivir. So what works? So they already said remdesivir is a recommendation against. This is an infographic from that same guideline, the living guidelines. So people with non-severe 
COVID-19 remdesivir is definitely not recommended to them and people with severe COVID-19 they should go on a corticosteroid treatment so systemic corticosteroids have been found to improve patient outcomes mortality as well as in general respite as well as recovery so systemic or corticosteroids here include drugs like prednisone dexamethasone there are a lot of different options available you can ask your doctor about it i'm not a, a doctor i'm just a phd so i'm not a medical professional i'm not advising against or in support of any drug i just want the evidence to be out there and i just want to discuss it with you people and hopefully inform you about the strength or the lack of strength of evidence for these drugs and this is the recommendation for the regimen of remdesivir and there is weak evidence as support as indicated by who and finally we come to okay what works then his systemic corticosteroids actually do work the panel made two recommendations a strong recommendation for systemic corticosteroids either intravenously provided or orally provided for example 6 mg of dexamethasone orally or intravenously daily or 50 mg of hydrocorticosteroid intravenously for every 8 hours and for non severe covid 19 patients even systemic corticosteroids did not provide much benefits so this is the actual scenario i i don't know what's going on with remdesivir there is a huge like a crazy mania going on for remdesivir and its availability and a lot of pharmaceutical firms even indian pharmaceutical firms are ramping up their production for remdesivir but i don't know what kind of evidence do we have uh, for supporting it and whether those resources could be utilized in something else okay so this was my discussion for evidence of remdesivir against covid-19 okay if you found this information useful please give the video a thumbs up till the next time we meet take care and bye bye